welcome to Coaching for Creatives with Kirsten. My name is Kirsten Call. I'm a therapist trained life coach and a children's book author. Together, we'll get the drama out of our lives and onto the page. Let's get started. You are listening to episode 51 Seven Ways to Ignite the Year of 2024. My family has the tradition of caroling right before Christmas every year. So last week as we caroled, we were about 30 minutes away from home. Our neighbor called to let us know the fire alarm was going off and the house was filling with smoke. (laughs) Whoops. We finished the home we were singing at very quickly. And the neighbor opened the doors and windows and confirmed there was no errant fire, at least no fire outside our heated stove. We hadn't set a fire that day, so we were confused, but happy the fire was where it belonged. (laughs) Then one of our daughters who was home from college confessed, I think this is my fault. I set a fire today. (laughs) Sometimes conditions are such that a fire produces smoke that invades our house. Basically, it just means we made the fire wrong. So we drove home, hoping the CO2 levels weren't high enough to kill the cat. Thoughts swirled through my head. Will the cat survive? If he doesn't, the family will be devastated. At least our stuff isn't burning right now. It could be much worse. My husband went inside with a CO2 meter as we waited in the car. Everyone, that is except for Sophia, who ran in to find and extricate the cat. Ghost, our cat, was absolutely fine. He was very scared and meowing, but he was fine. He joined us in the car, and when Daniel came out and explained the levels of CO2 were indeed dangerously high, (laughs) we were really grateful that ghost was okay. So we needed to be out of the house for a few hours as the CO2 levels dissipated. So we did what any good carolers would do. We continued caroling, this time with a cat. (laughs) When we got home several hours later, the entire house smelled like smoke. I wondered if we'd ever get the stench out. I considered we might be the family at church the next day who everyone steered clear of. It seemed like the smell infused every fiber of my clothing and each atom of our house. I might need to wash every linen and scrub every surface. That night, I slept with the windows open. Yes, it was chilly in a Boston winter kind of way, but the smell was worse. On Christmas Eve, if people smelled us, they didn't tell us. (laughs) Ten days later, and the smell is just a shadow of what it was. It's airing out and disappearing slowly. The entire experience was an adventure and an experience we likely won't forget. In fact, the smoke incident has probably made that night of caroling the most memorable of all caroling nights. Otherwise, it would have been lovely, lovely, and forgettable. So, what does this have to do with igniting the year of 2024? Well, luckily for me, the house didn't ignite, but we did have some excitement. It could have ignited panic and anger. Instead, This experience ignited what I predict will be positive memories of an adventure. Here are some powerful ways to ignite your year of 2024. Number one, take an inventory of the year of 2023. There are many ways to do this. Look at your calendar, peruse your journal if you write in one, swipe through your 2023 photos or social media accounts, then write down the tough stuff, the obstacles you've overcome, the things you've accomplished. Write down the lows and highs. Write down what you wanted out of 2023 and what you got out of 2023. If you're having a hard time remembering what you've accomplished, ask a good friend or family member. I promise you have overcome so much more than you thought possible. You've accomplished so much more than you realize. I love taking inventory because it ignites and inspires ideas for the next year. You realize you might have kindled some things that are ready to be blazing fires. So after you've taken a 2023 inventory, then comes number two, acknowledge yourself for your 2023 successes and failures. Because remember, success lives in the neighborhood of failure, and you survived 2023. At times, you even thrived. You can acknowledge yourself with words, thoughts, written or said aloud. You can acknowledge yourself with some dance moves or a hip hip hooray. Again, a super fun way to ignite your ideas and inspire a new beginning for the next year. 
All right, after you have acknowledged yourself for what you have accomplished, we'll move to number three, which is decide what you want to continue. What habits or actions helped you this year? What things helped you achieve success? What things helped you learn? What things do you enjoy doing? Body and soul. Okay, so these things can be big or small. For me, I'm so glad I spend time writing daily, if only in my journal. This daily practice helps me hone my skills, organize my thoughts, and be metacognitive about my life. I'm also glad I take frequent walks in nature. These walks keep me active and grateful. And every time I see a bird or an animal, my heart leaps. I saw a very rambunctious otter the other day. It was just flipping and playing. I saw a great blue heron blocking my path right there, feet away. I was privileged to see a stag with huge antlers blocking my path also recently. So other things I'm really happy that I'm doing. I'm so glad I started a new monthly book club. Discussing books monthly not only connects me with other book lovers, but it helps me have my finger on the pulse of what's out there right now and what types of books make my soul sing. This year, I've been taking time alone for personal retreats at Highlights. It gives me space and focus to achieve my personal writing goals for the year. I also want to continue school visits, continue teaching picture book writing at conferences, continue this podcast, etc. So ask yourself, what do I want to continue? This question ignites. This question is fire. Okay, next, after deciding what you want to continue, you need to decide what you want to stop. This can be almost anything. It can also be big or small. Perhaps you want to stop scrolling on Instagram so much. That's something I'm sometimes guilty of. My daughter deleted Instagram. It was a very effective way to stop scrolling. Perhaps you want to stop fighting with reality. Perhaps you want to notice your negative neural pathways and replace those negative thoughts with positive thoughts. Changing your narrative is always a good idea, especially if you're telling yourself a story that doesn't serve you. For me, I want to stop judging. I want to notice when I'm judging something or someone without any data or understanding of the person or circumstance. And I want to allow myself to be wrong in my judgment, noticing I'm wrong and then moving forward, loving with full and unconditional acceptance. This is something I've been working on for a while. Some of these things will take time, but it's worth the time and effort. So ask yourself, what do I want to stop this year? Strangely, Stopping the things that you want to stop is one of the best ways to ignite your year and ignite the things you really want to start. So that leads to our next question. Number five, decide what you want to start. What habits or actions do you want to begin? What inspires you? What fuels your creativity? What fills you with excitement? What opportunities feel right? This year, I'm going to record some of the writing classes I've taught and offer them on my website. I'm going to schedule in more free time. (laughs) This is actually a hard one for me. My schedule is usually brimming with so many things, good things, very good things. Also, I need time and space to think, to meditate, to ponder. I need time and space for my muse. This will give me time to be inspired. I have to specifically give myself permission to do nothing by scheduling it in. Of course, doing nothing in this case is actually doing something. (laughs) So that's one of the things I'm doing in the year 2024. I'm igniting my life with quiet. (laughs) So as you embark on your 2024 journey, remember my Caroline experience. There may be smoke and CO2 and other obstacles in your way. And perhaps all those things are the key to igniting a 2024 to remember, a 2024 full of passion and productivity and blazing fire. So here's to igniting creativity and adventure in 2024. Until next time, keep smiling. If you like what you've heard, check out my Get Yourself Unstuck program. Go to kirstencall.com, that's K-I-R-S-T-I-N-E-C-A-L-L.com and schedule a free consultation today. 
Coaching for Creatives is produced by Kirsten Call. Music and audio engineering by James Call. 